So as I mentioned in my previous video, Jordan Peterson is currently in Australia. He was interviewed at length by Bettina Arndt. There's another interview clip of Peterson with top Australian radio host Neil Mitchell, which is well worth a listen. And he's also appeared on the ABC 730 report. And this has led some to post videos titled Jordan, Jordan Peterson, Peterson Explosive, Explosive Interview, interview with, with Lee Sales. ABC host Clash with Jordan Peterson in heated discussion. discussion. Now, I'm sorry to disappoint, but this is just clickbait. This interview conducted by Lee Sales is not Cathy Newman 2.0. Don't get me wrong, the ABC, Australia's taxpayer-funded broadcaster, does have a left-leaning bias. Of the ABC journalists who agreed to answer a poll about their political attitudes, 40% said they were supporters of the far-left Greens Party in Australia, when the Greens manage only about 10% of the vote nationally. And the interviewer Lee Sales has been known to have her moments, but she's about as reasonable an interviewer as you're going to get on the ABC. So I'm going to play the six minutes or so of the interview, and I will interrupt a couple of times because there are some things worth commenting on. Dr Peterson, good to have you on the program. Thank you very much. With the popularity of your book and your YouTube lectures, you're obviously tapping into something that nobody else is tapping into at the moment. What is that? It's, it's, partly, it's partly responsibility. I don't think that people have talked to young people about responsibility in any real sense. Not, in, not and been on their side at the same time for like 50 years. And that's just too long because most people find the meaning in their life through responsibility. Isn't it fair to say, though, that some people, through no fault of their own, have tough lives and that no matter how much personal, uh, personal responsibility they take, that that won't change? So, for example, yes. you and I, we've had a lot of good fortune in our lives. We've been born to, uh, you know, reasonably um, affluent, peaceful countries. Mm. Um, you know, I have a, a job that I have worked hard at, but I've had lots of luck. You have mm. written a book uh, and done a series of lectures that have become embraced mm. around the world. Some people don't get lucky breaks. Like That's that. for sure. Some people just die and horribly. Yeah, life's rough. No doubt about it. And if good luck comes your way, then you should be grateful for it. And if happiness manages to manifest itself, you should be grateful for that too. But how do you give a personal responsibility message while taking account that for some people it's harder to take personal responsibility and the deck is stacked against them? Well, I think the deck is stacked against everyone to some degree because life is very difficult and we all die. So, but People, some people do have it harder than others. And, and all of us have it very hard at some times in our lives. It's like, well, what's the, what's the alternative? You take responsibility for that and try to struggle uphill because the alternative makes everything worse. It's not like it's fair. I know perfectly well that people have brutal lives. I've been a psychotherapist for 20 years. I've seen things you can't imagine, horror shows that you can't fathom. And people who have been hurt in so many ways, so many dimensions. It's like, bitter? Should they be bitter? Should they be resentful? Should they become violent? These things don't help. They have to struggle uphill despite their excess burden. And it's, it's responsibility, not guilt. You know, it's not necessarily their fault. That's not the point. And I thought that was a great answer. Yeah, life isn't fair. Some people have it tougher than others, often through no fault of their own. But you do have a choice to play the victim or take responsibility. The problem today is we have too many playing victim and too many willing to indulge victimhood, to treat people as fragile rather than resilient. And that manifests itself through identity politics and social justice activism. We've been seeing a trend um, particularly in the United States, but also here in Australia, where there has been an erosion of freedom of speech on campuses, um, where people with views that are, that are considered offensive, politically incorrect or triggering um, are no longer now... You mean now... people with views, in other words? <laughs> uh, well, certain views, more than others, mm -hmm. tend to be not just um, the subject of protest, but those people will be, you know, there'll be attempts to exclude them from speaking at campuses. Yeah, I've noticed that. What is going to be the effect if that kind of uh, behaviour continues in those kinds of environments? Well, it's hard to tell. The, the broader social effect is not going to be good because lots of the things that are happening in the universities that aren't good are already leaking out into the broader social world. Um, part of what's going to happen is that people are going to stop coming and speaking on campuses. The comedians in the United States, many of them already won't speak on, they won't come and do their shows on campus because everybody's so sensitive to offence. But it, it, it'll, it also drives po political polarisation which isn't a good thing unless you want to drive political polarisation. And I think the universities are going to cut the branch off that they sit on. Is being 
sensitive to offence such a problem? Though? Like we would have previously called that manners. It's a terrible problem. So imagine, you know, imagine you, st okay, so the rule is you can't offend anyone, all right? Let's say you're speaking to one person, I can't offend you. All right, fair enough. What if I'm speaking to 10 people? Do I get to offend one in 10? How about one in 100? How about one in 1,000? You're going to come out on stage and you're going to say something important about something vital and you're not going to offend one person in 1,000? Well, you can't say anything about anything important ever without offending probably the person you're talking to. Important speech about important issues, especially contentious issues, is instantly offensive. But there are ways that you can share, I guess, um, provocative views where you attempt to still do that in a, with an air of, say, respectfulness, where you're yeah. trying to mitigate against the offensiveness. This is true, yeah. You can actually try listening when you're, when you're having a conversation, right? Assuming that both people who are having the conversation are of goodwill and they're not trying to play tricks and they're struggling towards the truth, which neither of them hold completely and both understand that, yeah, you can reach across fairly large gaps and negotiate peace. Thank God for that, or we'd be at each other's throats all the time. Well, say the example of there are some transgender people who want to not be referred to as he or she, they would prefer to be called Z or they. Mm -hmm. um, if somebody wants to be addressed like that, what does it cost me to do that? It's hard to tell because it, the devil's always in the details, but as far as I'm concerned, that's, that situation is, it's, it's not relevant to the issues, for example, that I was involved in. I didn't care if transgender people wanted to be called by some pronouns, like whatever, that's something for individuals to negotiate. When the, when the government makes that a compulsion and insists in their legislation that biological sex, uh, gender identity, gender expression and sexual proclivity very independently, it's like, no, they don't. That's wrong factually, and you're not going to compel my speech. I don't care what your damn justification is. So you see that as, am I right, in that you see that as a curtailing of freedom? It's worse than a curtailing of freedom. It's a demand that the population uses a certain kind of linguistic approach. It's, a, it's an appropriation of speech. There's no excuse for that. That never has happened once in the history of English common law. Right? It's a barrier that we do not cross. Hate speech laws are bad enough. It's not like there's no hate speech. Like anyone with any sense knows that there's hate speech. Who's going to regulate it? Who's going to define it? And I know the answer to that. The last people in the world you would want to. And then we, we cross another barrier and we allow the government to compel speech for some hypothetically compassionate reason? No way. That's a really bad idea. Dr. Peterson, thanks very much for joining us. Thanks a lot for the invitation. Now, I'm going to skip the part about offence taking because I don't think that was especially egregious. She's at least acknowledged that there is a problem. But I think the last part is interesting. Peterson is often labelled a transphobe, but the issue Peterson was opposing all along was the idea of compelled speech. I don't know if Peterson's claim about compelled speech having never happened under English common law is true. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Regardless, it's an extremely important point. The idea that the government can compel you under the threat of law for not addressing someone by the made-up pronoun of their choice is outright totalitarian. And of course, he's absolutely spot on when he says the type of people that will be appointed to adjudicate such matters will be the last people you want doing it because they are the activists and the ideologues. You can see that just by taking a look at some of our human rights commissioners in Australia today. And perhaps some Canadians watching this would say the same thing about their human rights commissioners. Let us know in the comments. Anyway, this was not the Australian Kathy Newman interview that some have tried to make it out to be. I thought it was reasonable given it was the ABC. It was a little short in duration. I'm sure they film more than that. But anyway, I thought it was worth a watch. As usual, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And I'll see you next time.